I know what you're thinking. Hey, finally the video that I promised five months ago. Now look, if you've been watching this channel for a little while, you'll know that I planned on making my personal website, my personal portfolio since last year. Um, well, today is that last year for me. I've been pretty busy. Okay, thank you. But I figured, hey, enough is enough. Let's actually get this site up and running because I also kind of need it. So this series is split into five different parts. Number one, we're going to be planning a sitemap. In part two, we will be doing the wireframe and the entire initial layout and the design of the website. Number three, we will be doing the actual high quality mockups in Figma. Four, we will be building this website bringing it to code and bringing it to life. In this step, I'll be showing you my entire process and the tools that I use to build a typical site. And finally, number five, we'll be deploying this site to a hosting server so everybody can go and look at it. So for today, we'll be focusing on part one, and that is building a website sitemap. So a sitemap is usually the first thing that I do when I start talking about a website. Before wireframing, before any sort of design phase, I sketch out a sitemap that is more like a bird's eye overview of pretty much every single page uh, that I will need to make. And it also gives me a nice overview of and the general structure of every sub page and what type of content it, it's gonna have before I even have the final content to put on the site. Basically, a sitemap can be very beneficial and the more pages you have to build, the more, the more beneficial this sitemap will be to you later down the line. Now, I'm not planning on having a lot of sub pages in mind for my website, but I still decided to include this in the process because I still do have a couple of sub pages and I would still like to lay out this foundational work uh, that I can reference later. This sitemap will also be very beneficial for you to create a proper XML sitemap that you'll be submitting to Google search later to, for Google to index your website. Now you won't be sending this to Google, you'll make a proper sitemap later down the line in a digital XML format. Now first we need to define what the website's use is. There is so many different use cases for a website. For me personally, it's a portfolio website where when use visitors go to it, I want them to see who I am. I want them to know what I do. I want them to see my work and I also want them to become clients. I want them to potentially contact me about future work opportunities. Now this might seem like my website has so many different goals, but really the main CTA or a call to action for my website is for people to contact me about work, to hire me. So everything else that I mentioned, things like who am I about me, my work, all of this kind of falls together into that one category. But by the end of the day, all I want is for people to potentially contact me. So that is the main goal of my website. Okay, now that we have defined what the website is, we can go ahead and design it, right? Oh, uh, no, 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 no. You see, this starts with a physical paper and a pen. So we're not there in Figma just, just yet. Okay, so here I am at my desk. I got a piece of paper here uh, and a pen. That's also pretty important if you actually wanna write things down. Uh, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is uh, write home. Now, I already do have a concept in my head of how I want this thing to look like. And I do know that for the website, I want to have a really big banner at the top uh, and a CTA. So I do wanna have a banner and a CTA. That's gonna be the first thing on my homepage. Uh, I want, after that, I do want to have an about me section. Uh, this is not going to be a really in-depth about me section. This is just going to be a little bit about me, like a short bio, like something you would find on Twitter or YouTube, for example. So I don't want this to be overly complicated. I want it to be like about uh, a paragraph max with maybe a picture or that's probably going to be on the banner as well. So maybe not a picture there. Uh, but I also, after that, I do also want to have some of my work showcased. Uh, this also, I'm not planning on putting my entire portfolio on the website. The entire idea behind this homepage is that I want people to be able to get to all the information they could possibly want to know without having to click through any sub menus or any sub pages. 
Uh, the reason for that is because users are much more likely to stay on your site if you can feed them content by just simply you know, scrolling up and down the page versus having to click through different menus to get to different information. So if I can remove this friction between clicking and scrolling uh, and getting information, um, that's going to be a huge win both for me and for the user whom is going to stumble or for in this case visitors who want us who stumble across my website and they want to get more information they don't have to click through different menus they can just scroll and get everything they could possibly need should they want more information there will be links to get deeper into uh, either like a specific category for example if you want to read more about me there's going to be a different bio page what i'm planning on doing so if you want to read more um, about me as a designer and about me as a person you can click read more uh, that's going to give you uh, more information on a sub page, something that's not exactly important, but if you want, it, it's there. Uh, after, social, uh, after work, I do want to have a social category here. Uh, I'm primarily planning on making... Uh, now, this is not a design phase, so um, we don't really need to worry about how things are going to look like. But what I had in mind is to make some sort of grid layout of a bunch of different posts combined together. So I would want to have something like my YouTube videos, for example, here. Uh, maybe an Instagram post as well, and the dribble as well. So that's uh, the social feed. Uh, it's not going to be a rec I'm not planning on making it like a regular uh, row type, like here, here's my most recent video, and then here are a bunch of Instagram posts, here's a bunch of dribble posts. I want this thing to be uh, a little bit of a uh, dynamic composition, if you will. Um, but we're going to worry about that when we uh, get to the actual design phase. So uh, for now, it's just going to be social. It's going to link to my social links, pretty self-explanatory. And we're going to also finally have the contact form. So for the contact form, also, if you can't read my letter, uh, my uh, writing, I'm sorry, but this is not meant to be pretty. This is just meant to be something that you can use to organize your work. So there you go. <laughs> um, so for the contact form, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's a form you can uh, go to, to send me an email, to contact me if you want to work on a project, if you want to hire me for a project and stuff like that. Uh, so this is also going to be the primary CTA, the contact form. So even though I mentioned that I do have a CTA here on top, I do actually want this CTA to link to that contact form here. Uh, so we're going to have a huge banner on the top and the CTA is going to be something like contact me and instead of just bring you either to a different page or a pop-up, I think I'm just going to make the page scroll down to this contact form instead so they can fill out the form and um, get in touch. Uh, but that's the home page. So let's start working on sub pages. Uh, so the first sub page that I'm planning on planning on showcasing is my work subsection or sub page. Sorry. So here, uh, this is going to be the first sub page, which is going to be linked towards this work section. Like I mentioned, I'm not going to have all work laid out at my landing page immediately. Um, I'm probably going to have either three or four most recent. Uh, either dribble shots or actual pieces in portfolio and then there's gonna be like a see more section or even maybe in the menu bar where you can actually go to this work sub page that's actually going to list all uh, portfolio items so I'm just gonna name portfolio items here uh, now here for this rectangle I usually like to do this little triangle here at the bottom now what this signalizes for me is that this is a templated page. So this is a dynamic page, which means that there's going to, going to, going to be our CMS page, sorry. Uh, so that means that there's going to be more portfolio pages within this workshop page. So instead of laying out every single possible uh, work page that I might put in, uh, I just put portfolio items and that, you know, uh, signalizes that uh, there's going to be more portfolio items here than just one. Um, uh, all of this will probably make more sense on, once we actually get to either wireframing or the design phase because uh, right now the goal of this sitemap is to just lay all the work down uh, or just get a general uh, bird's eye view of, uh, of every page that we're going to make. 
I did also mention that I do want a bio page, so I'm gonna make an a bio page here. I'm gonna link that through the home page down. Uh, here I'm not planning on having any sort of sub pages, so we're just gonna leave it at the bio and about me. So this page is gonna be a more in-depth overview of me. Maybe it's gonna talk about like everything that I do on, <laughs> maybe it's gonna talk about everything that I do on the internet and uh, just, uh, just generally a much more deeper uh, bio about me than what you would find on the landing page more than one paragraph in this case. Uh, so this is basically the main stuff that I want to do for my website. However, I do have a few things that I'm planning on doing in the future. So it's actually a good thing to, it would be a good thing to lay them out here so I can already think about the design of this uh, and how it's going to impact the future pages that I'm planning on doing. Uh, so the one that I'm planning on doing in the future is a blog page. Uh, this is probably something that's probably not even going to happen this year. This is a future roadmap, maybe for 2022. I would really like to start writing a blog uh, about design and all that. Uh, basically have a written piece of maybe even some of my more in-depth videos, um, which would be a pretty good start. So I would really like to have like a blog homepage where you could go click on a blog and then you would basically see the entire list of uh, basically every single blog post that I made. Uh, and from there, I'm just gonna keep it simple and just put blog posts. I'm not gonna pro I'm probably not gonna have any categories because all of this will fall into design. So I probably just want to have something like blog posts right under that blog page. Uh, should that change in the future, it's uh, not gonna be a big deal. But for right now, it's actually just good to know what kind of pages I'm looking forward to in the future. Um, so you know, I can maybe base my design, my current design. Uh, with that in mind, so I'm gonna have less work to do later when I actually want to, you know, make these pages happen. And something that's also going to go into a much farther future is actually gonna be a store. Uh, now, I'm planning on selling like digital things, like uh, like I mentioned, I have already made one font before, and I would like to make more fonts potentially, maybe even sell them. Apart from that, I would also like to do maybe even some physical items such as print, such as t-shirt prints and stuff. Uh, these are all like future roadmaps from like maybe not even 2021. This is something that's that might happen in like five years time. And there's nothing to say that I'm not going to redesign my website five times by the point I get to this. Uh, but it's good to have this in mind um, in the event that it does happen earlier. Uh, so in a regular store, we would probably want to have categories. And if you're wondering how I made it through art school without being able to draw a perfect rectangle, um, I'm, I'm wondering the same thing. And last, we're gonna have products here just to see how this type of page would look like. Uh, damn, this roadmap. <laughs> this roadmap is not meant to look pretty. It's just meant to lay out everything that we need. So this is basically everything that I'm planning on doing uh, for my website for this current redesign. Uh, primarily, I want to focus on these uh, two different sub pages and the home page. So this is going to be now and I'm planning on doing all of this uh, in a future roadmap. Future roadmap. Uh, so the blog page and the store, these are going to be in the future roadmap, something I'm going to not even design right now, but I will keep this in mind. The reason why I want to keep this in mind, like I said previously, is because I want to make sure that when I'm designing, for example, if I'm designing a structure of the page, the main layout, I want to keep the blog posts in mind. For example, I want to make sure that, hmm, could this layout fit like a really huge paragraph in it and make it look good? or is it something that I need to redesign? So keeping this in mind will basically mean less work in the future when I actually do get to uh, uh, bring these things onto my actual page. And there we go, that's my sitemap. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. To next time we will be talking about wireframing and building the original layout and the content structure of uh, the website. So maybe stick around, click subscribe. Thank you for watching and have a great day.